My name is Reggie Ose, first generation American by way of Haiti, born and raised in Crown Heights, moved back to Crown Heights, loved Brooklyn, grew up not knowing what I wanted to do, was always creative and artistic, but in the 80s, when it got hectic out here, decided to go to law school. Went to Georgetown Law, came out, worked at Def Jam back in the late 80s, got a, a great taste of what the music industry was, what the music culture was. I'm in an environment where I see Russell Simmons every day. I see Chuck D every day. I see LL Cool J and Run DMC, and I'm learning about the business at the same time. And also learning that my skill set as an attorney was different from a lot of my peers. One of the first deals I did was for these two young cats. I think they were like 17 and 18 at the time. These two cousins, Dash Management with Darian Dash and Damon Dash. The Ramones were down the hall. Eric B's production company was down the hall. Eddie F was right next door to our office. At any moment, man, I went from seeing Madonna, Cool G Rap, to Mary J. Blige. But at the turn of the century, man, 2003, I didn't feel the music anymore. I didn't feel the business anymore. And I wanted to get back to being a creative, man. I tend to be an impulsive cat anyway. I don't think when I move because I feel what I'm doing is right. So I shut down my entire law practice. Woke up January 1st, 2004, like what the hell am I gonna do? I got three kids, I got bills. I shut down my entire law practice, started blogging, and I had a lot to write about, about my adventures in the music industry. But because I was so close to the culture, so close to the business, I was insecure. So I wanted to hide behind a name, so I came up with the name Combat Jack. I started an online radio show called The Combat Jack Show. It was me and my boys coming together to talk, at barbershop talk, and then we started getting guests, man, MOP. Just Blaze, who eventually became a part of the show. DJ Premier, and my show became one of the most respected shows of urban culture, social justice. Somebody was asking me, like, don't you think there's good cops? Of course. But this is the thing. I think there are good and great people who are cops. Right. But I think the term good cop is a conundrum. So, it's an oxymoron. Right. Because the job ain't good. The job ain't good. The machine. The, the machine. They are a part of a machine that's not good. They are agents of a machine that are not good. Is there, are there good people in those roles? Absolutely. Right, 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 right. Great people who really thought they were joining to make a difference and make a change, who but now find themselves currently f***ing up people's days. And over the past five years, my show grew from just being a Combat Jack show to a network called the Loudspeakers Network. I see black podcasts like we've definitely made an impact. We've definitely shifted culture, but it's still linear, it's still one dimensional. As much as we have accolades, as much as we're changing the culture, I still view it as a chitlin circuit. Is us being, catching up to the main podcast is like This American Life or the Mark Marins or Gimlet Media and really just expanding on production and gain, gaining those resources so that we leave the chitlin circuit and we are in Hollywood, the other Hollywood of podcasting. You went to school, what's George Westenhouse? Yeah, I went to Tilden too. With, 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 with Biggie? And Ho. And, and Jay-Z. And I was in Tilden with Special Ed and Chip Full. So it wasn't a movie. It wasn't high school rap musical where None of that. it's you, Hove, None and Biggie in the, in the lunchroom, nah, nah. and y'all got a crowd around y'all and y'all banging on the table. Your turn. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a fame. Never seen Biggie rhyme in school. Mm. I never seen him rhyme in school. You ever see Jay rhymes? We, me and Jay battled in school. Ooh, tell us about that. Man. I took an L. You took an L. Speed rap. Speed rap. To me, the Brooklyn Renaissance was the late 80s, early 90s, when I would walk down Vanderbilt or Prospect Park and see a young Spike Lee, a young Chris Rock, just seeing like Erica Badu or Common or just seeing the cats that you knew were shaping the culture and were on the verge. To me, that was the Brooklyn Renaissance because you could touch cats and see the future. To me, that was Brooklyn Renaissance. Right now, it's, it's, um, it's, it's aggressive gentrification. And as much as it benefits me, as much as it benefits a lot of people's quality of lives, it's scary. It's scary to me because it's like it's colonization all over again. You know, like I'm glad that my kids, they've never been in a fight. And I love that. I love that they don't have the, the PTSD type syndromes that we, because we, you know, if you came up in the 70s and the 80s, you got PTSD. And there's still hoods, you know, you know Brownsville, East New York, you know, Bed Stuy is still, brothers are still in the war. But how these cats can come in and just try to wipe out our entire legacy. Our culture's not disposable, man. As much as, you know, we've been brainwashed and brainwashed and brainwashed to drive over the Brooklyn Bridge and you see these big signs about how Elvis and 
the Beatles or on, on Apple Music, how they the greatest of all time. Now we're the greatest of all time. You won't forget that. You won't forget that. Black excellence is everywhere. Black excellence is everywhere. And we always have to constantly train our eye to see it. On any corner from the highest office in the nation to any street corner, black excellence is everywhere.